Thanks for joining us today for this video blog. I'm Mike James and I coordinate discipleship and assimilation for the Kentucky Baptist Convention. Today churches are using a lot of different methods in discipling. Some use one on a few, some use one on many, and some do the one-on-one -on -one methods. There are a lot of good methods out there for discipling and there's a lot of good resources for discipling. And we're glad to have today as our special guest, Claude King, who is at Lifeway. He is uh, our discipleship specialist. Claude, welcome. We appreciate you, having Mike. you today. Uh, many of you probably know Claude from his uh, writings and uh, his speaking. And probably one resource in particular that we're going to talk about in this video broadcast that has impacted really people around the world, and that is experiencing God. And uh, Claude co-wrote that with Henry Blackaby, and we're going to talk about that today. Uh, Claude, uh, do we know how many people uh, have been impacted by experiencing God? Uh, maybe we'll know in eternity. <laughs> okay. I think uh, probably close to seven million books in English wow. have been uh, sold. Of course, that would represent a number of people who, by multiple books, have gone through the study multiple times. It's been translated into probably 50 or 60 languages, and we don't have records of the international use of that. So. Um, we don't know for sure, wow. but a lot of people. That's amazing. I actually brought, Claude, my uh, original one in 1993 that I went through. I know the cover has changed, and actually I think you all have edited and added uh, uh, another chapter. And then here is the, the newest one looking like this. And one reason I wanted Claude to talk about experiencing God, it seems to me, Claude, there's, a, there's kind of a generation that have missed it. Uh, it was very you know, used a lot in the 90s as such, and still churches use it. I, I hear churches all the time taking a large groups of people through it, and I wanted uh, our listeners to know that it is a wonderful resource. Share with us somehow uh, uh, how you got involved, first off, in writing uh, this with Henry Blackaby. Well, I was working with Avery Willis at the Baptist Sunday School Board in those days. We were developing the Lay Institute for Equipping, or the Life Learning System resources. We wanted to provide a seminary quality education for lay people that they could do in their uh, local church to get equipped for ministry. And we wanted to do a course on knowing and doing God's will. Uh, Avery and I were at a national lay renewal conference in Tacoa, Georgia, and Henry Blackaby was the guest speaker. He was the, still the director of missions in Vancouver, British Columbia. And, and uh, the uh, afternoon uh, session uh, Reed Harden asked him if he'd speak on knowing and doing God's will just for whoever wanted to come. And everybody skipped recreation to come hear Henry. And uh, I remember Avery leaned over to me and he said, Claude, you think he's got enough for a life course? And uh, I said, I don't know, let's talk to him. And we began to talk. And, and uh, as we listened and saw the response of lay people, we realized God had entrusted Henry with a very significant message for the body of Christ. And, and so we began working, that was 1986. We spent four years essentially working with Henry and talking through the process until uh, the book actually came out in October of 1990. Yeah, wow. Tell us some ways, Claude, you're seeing how churches are using Experiencing God as part of their strategy uh, to make disciples. Uh, share some of your experience on how churches are utilizing this, this uh, resource. Well, I, uh, churches have used it in a lot of different ways. Uh, I was just in a church yesterday that uh, 15 years ago the church went through this study and so a lot of people have memories of the 15 years ago but uh, what they're realizing is we've got a whole generation now of uh, people who were 8 and 10 they're now young adults and they haven't learned what we uh, were teaching and experiencing God and, and so they're recognizing we need to do this again. That particular church had decided on a church-wide emphasis, and they have about 150 people that are going to be going through that study together. Wow. Um, I've been in uh, churches that uh, offer it periodically, sometimes uh, regularly. I've talked to some people that have taught it for 25 or 30 times, mm. and they just have an ongoing uh, opportunity for people in their church to uh, study experience in God. Um, so there are a lot of different ways that it can be used. Uh, some churches kick that off with an Experiencing God weekend where they'll have a Friday night, Saturday, and Sunday morning uh, introduction to the seven realities of Experiencing God. And as lay people hear uh, other lay people uh, introduce the message, share their stories, 
uh, then they begin to realize this would be worth giving my time and attention to. And at the conclusion of the weekend, they have an opportunity to sign up for a small group. I remember one of those first ones we did at a church in Texas. The Minister of Education had bought 60 books for uh, people who would sign up for the course and 459 signed wow. up. <laughs> so uh, he had to order some more. But uh, it is an opportunity for, for a whole church to work together and to begin to capture God's vision for what he wants to do in and through that congregation. Uh, as I think about it though, one of the things that's really disturbed me is so many places I go, people say, well, we studied that 15 years ago or 10 years ago or 18 years ago. And uh, I remember people coming to Henry when we first released this material and saying, Henry, if I had only known this 30 years ago, my entire ministry would have been different. And uh, I just think about those people who uh, have not been introduced to that message and it would be a shame for that resource to be available and 30 years from now them say, why did somebody not introduce me to this message? Another interesting thing I had happen back in January, I was in Hawaii doing a conference. <laughs> it's nice to get invited to go there to do a conference, but I met a pastor and he said, when I was in the seventh grade, our minister of education required 30 of us kids to go through experiencing God to prepare for a mission trip. And he said that was the days before a youth version was available. So we all went through the adult version and he said, out of that 30, three of us are pastors and three of us are missionaries. Wow. And you stop and think, leading 30 young people through a study like that over 13 weeks and six get called to the ministry, would that be a beneficial uh, opportunity for you to present to your young people, knowing that when people begin to understand how to hear God's voice and have a relationship with them, God may call them to ministry or service or involvement in the local congregation in a way that would accomplish kingdom purposes we wouldn't even stop to think about. Amen. Well, I can speak personal experience, Claude. I've been through, through experiencing God three times. I've taught it once, but just personally worked through it. And uh, each time God has said something different to me. So those maybe that have uh, utilized this 10, 12 years ago, they would benefit from going back through it. And also I would think we would have a lot of people that would be uh, available now to teach it having gone through it. We have a a generation of people, I've heard you, heard you say this, that could go back to their churches and offer this. Uh, speak to that, if you will, for a well, moment. Well, I've, I've called that group the Discipleship Reserve Corps. Okay. <laughs> Good. Uh, people that may have studied and been discipled years ago, and now they're, uh, they're kind of uh, relaxing, and uh, in a sense, they're in the Reserve Corps, mm -hmm. and it's time to go to active duty. We desperately need those folks who've been trained and equipped to get involved in helping us to disciple a new generation. Many of them have, have never been discipled and if somebody doesn't help them, uh, we're gonna miss this generation and have people who don't know how to walk with the Lord, who don't know how to serve Him faithfully and fruitfully. And uh, if that continues, it's gonna impact us down the road significantly. Our churches are already suffering from the lack of that leadership development and helping people really walk with the Lord. So uh, calling those folks who've been equipped, who've been through the study before to uh, active duty would be a good thing for a church to do. Amen, call up the reserves. Well, Claude, thank you for your time today. And I hope that a lot of people that are listening will, will take another look at experiencing God as a part of their strategy to disciple their members. You can find more information about this at 2819, uh, my blog, as well as the Kentucky Baptist Convention website. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Claude, for being with us. Thank you.